really hope this doesn't sound like some kind of like Scientology ad or something. <laughs> Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the video games industry? As if the games you are playing leave you exhausted after hours of grinding? What if there are moments in games that offer an escape from this feeling, but just go by completely unnoticed? Toby Fox's 2015 hit Undertale has built itself as one of the most iconic indie game titles of the 2010s. This is partially due to its cast of witty characters, a visual style that celebrates the 8-bit genre, and a soundtrack that could figuratively unalive any 95-year-old monarch currently sitting atop the UK throne. There is, however, one scene in Undertale that has managed to bury itself deep into my mind years later. It's not the first meeting with Sans, or the fight with Sans, or anything Sans related whatsoever. The scene in particular is found in the middle of the waterfall section, after a tense encounter with the armor clad Undyne. You meet up with Monster Kid, a child of the underground that relates to you for being, well, a child. Harsh rain starts showering from atop the screen. You walk further and further into the caves as rain buffets your umbrella, until you find this scene. Relief. The rain no longer hits your face and instead echoes throughout the cave, as if you the player have just come home after a storm. The visuals of the scene are striking alone, how the castle glows in the distance, leaving you and your monstrous friend in silhouette. But what hits me every time is how Monster Kid runs ahead to just admire the setting before them, staring off into the distance. Given the focus of choice as a main mechanic in Undertale, you can choose to simply ignore the kid and move on as if nothing happens. But what I think is magical is how Toby Fox invites you, through Monster Kid, to take a moment to breathe, to reflect on the journey that you've made so far, and see what lies ahead of you, your final goal, to leave the underground. This moment of reflection, a brief period of time where you aren't being bombarded by constant action, links to the Zen Japanese phrase, ah. The phrase simply means gap, or pause, and refers to the concept of negative space, the importance of what is not being shown. One example is Hasegawa Tahaku's Shorenzu Byobu, or Pine Tree Screen in English which was elevated to a national treasure of Japan in 1952. It is a piece that draws you in with its elegant simplicity. There are no other objects than these trees, and the distinct space around them. Ma doesn't just have to be a blank page. Background music can be weaved through a scene incorporating Ma to enhance the feeling of that particular moment. This could be the low hum of a single tone, a soundscape of nature, or even possibly the smooth chugging of a locomotive. I believe that Hayao Miyazaki's Spirited Away, as well as being one of my favourite films of all time, offers the superlative of this concept in modern film. The train scene pops up an hour and a half through the runtime, showcasing our heroine Chihiro and the ominous snow face riding towards one final quest. There is little to no dialogue in the scene, just the sound of the train whirring, and the beautiful masterwork of Joe Hisaishi's The Sixth Station. The visuals also clearly represent Ma. Most of the world outside the train is a blank minimalist slate, just sky, and the reflective pool of water stretching to the horizon. In an interview with Roger Ebert, Miyazaki showcased Ma by clapping his hands, stating, The time in between my clapping is Ma. If you just have non-stop action, with no breathing space at all, it's just busyness. This sense of emptiness, being able to breathe and take time to pace yourself, is prevalent in a whole host of Miyazaki's work. 
but it can also be seen outside of anime. And what I've seen recently is it propping up throughout more and more narrative-focused video games. Thunder Lotus's Spiritfarer, an absolute highlight of what was a trash fire of 2020, uses this technique to its advantage. One core game mechanic is when you complete a character's main questline, you must then ferry their spirit to a final resting place, the Everdor. You row with them across a deep red river against a backdrop of white blossoms as you make your way towards the end. Chances are you'll run through all of the dialogue before you reach this destination, and all you get are the sound of waves hitting your oar, the whistling of the wind on the leaves, and a few scattered piano notes. Anyone who has played Spiritfarer understands this brief moment of tranquility, seeing these lovable characters for the last time. All you can do now is row your boat and reflect on your journey. I recently played through Nights in the Woods, a game that hit really close to home, dealing with themes of leaving university and the uncertainties that come after. There's a scene where, for a solid minute, our protagonist May rides a bike with her old friend Greg. This scene doesn't expand the plot or require any interaction. I believe that scenes such as these in narrative-focused titles really helps develop the relationship between two characters. Adding dialogue to the scene would be completely unnecessary, and the choice to stay with these two characters without any dialogue helps create multiple readings. Personally, I think that May and Greg don't need to constantly be talking, that they are comfortable in each other's company as long-term friends. But you could take this silence with a sense of unease, that this moment is fleeting, and that their lives are soon going to have to go their separate ways. Shadow of the Colossus, arguably one of the most used case studies for game-focused video essays, for good reason, also acts as another key example of brutal minimalism in video games. Whether that's the distinct lack of music when riding through the barren plains on your way to defeat an unsuspecting titan, or possibly the bracing fear after just killing a colossus, waiting for that moment when the strips of darkness start to attack. Unlike Spiritfarer, which uses the Zen theme as a means to reflect on a moment through a window of fondness, Shadow the Colossus instead uses Ma in a different manner. Not just as a means to focus on the journey ahead, but instead to build tension. You as Wanda are not native to this land. You are destroying these magnificent creatures, and soon you will be destroyed as well. Going back to Hayao Miyazaki, he mentions, If you take a moment, then the tension building in the film can grow into a wider dimension. If you have constant tension at 80 degrees all the time, you just get numb. This use of nothingness, to let a scene sit and linger, can really help elevate the accompanying action. It can create a sense of fear, an on-edge feeling. What makes horror so scary isn't the monster itself, but the build-up to the reveal. In a world where our senses are being constantly bombarded with non-stop content, where apps such as TikTok offer instant gratification at the swipe of a finger, or how competitive shooters such as Call of Duty have you interacting constantly, there's no time to sit back and meditate, to reflect on what you're doing. I feel that personally, taking time to play these narrative-focused games over the past few years has offered an insight as to what I truly want when I experience a video game. It has taught me that sometimes it's okay to take in the scenery, to appreciate the work that environment artists, sound designers, narrative designers, composers, VFX artists all put in, to truly experience a game in full. Some of the most important moments in these games are when nothing happens. And sometimes, it's good to just take some time to breathe.
Hi, I'm Owen. I'm a video editor currently working in the games industry. I had an absolute blast with the Overload team pulling this all together, as these games have been a huge influence towards my journey into video games. If you want to see more cool stuff like this, follow me at the Puggy on the Twitter.com for some amazing edits.